In this video, we'll perform an electrothermal simulation of a power inverter by coupling ANSYS Q3D extractor with ANSYS ice pack. An inverter is a device that converts direct current to alternating current. To convert DC to AC, an inverter uses semiconductor switches called IGBTs, or insulated gate bipolar transistors, that are turned on and off by a controller. IGBT-based inverters are used in electric vehicles, UPS units, and solar inverters to power AC loads in cars, homes, and buildings. For many industrial applications, they are part of variable frequency drives to control the speed and torque of AC motors. Since IGBTs excel at handling high voltages and currents, they are well suited for many high power applications. Traction motor systems and high-speed electric trains are equipped with power converters that feature IGBT modules and diodes. Let's look at how they work. This is a diagram of a typical electrical train system. There is an overhead line that provides single-phase AC current. However, the traction motors that move the train require three-phase AC current to operate. Therefore, it's necessary to convert from single-phase AC to three-phase. A device called a pantograph connects the train with the overhead line. It draws single-phase AC current from the line and conveys it to a transformer, which steps the voltage down to the desired level. Then, as an intermediate step, IGBT-based rectifiers convert the single-phase AC current to DC. IGBT inverters then convert the DC current to three-phase AC to drive the traction motors. Clearly, IGBTs are very important for these trains. Because they operate at high voltages and currents, IGBTs produce a lot of heat and this could decrease their reliability. Bad cooling fans and high ambient temperatures can cause overheating leading to device failure. Using ANSYS tools, you can simulate electrothermal effects and use the results to improve the reliability and stability of a design. Here is an IGBT-based half-bridge inverter design modeled in ANSYS Q3D extractor. The package is 11.5 centimeters long and contains 8 IGBTs and 8 power diodes. You can see that the structure is very three-dimensional. Let's look at the components of this design. Silicon IGBT and diode chips are mounted on one side of the substrate using solder. The substrate, made of aluminum nitride, gives electrical insulation to the base plate. The base plate is made of aluminum. It will transfer the heat from the semiconductor devices to an external heat sink. Electrical connections are provided by the wire bonds and traces, and these are also made of aluminum. Power enters the inverter through the DC- and DC- terminals. They are defined as sources in Q3D. Power comes out from the Phase 1 and Phase 2 plates. I have assigned sinks to them. Gate down and gate up switch the IGBTs on and off. I have defined a DC resistance inductance solution in the solve setup for Q3D and deselected the other solution types. Frequency doesn't matter here since we're running a DC solution only. I left the default settings on the DC RL tab. Right click on Field Overlays and select Edit Sources. Click the DC RL tab. We'll perform the analysis assuming a 100 amp load current. This load current will flow in through the DC plus source, through the IGBTs, and then into the IGBT pin E2 source, and finally out the sync terminal of the phase net. We haven't included the current in the gate terminals because they're quite small compared to the others. We want to look at the temperature and thermal effects, so let's add an ice pack design to this project. Press Ctrl A to select the geometry. Copy the entire geometry from Q3D Extractor. Paste the geometry into ice pack. We'll link the EM power losses from Q3D Extractor to ice pack. The metal objects and alloys, like solder, are the main sources of joule heat, so we'll include them in the thermal simulation. Press O to enter object selection mode. Collapse all the objects under aluminum. Likewise under solder. Click aluminum. With the control key depressed, click solder. Now right-click on one of these and select All on the shortcut menu. All of the aluminum and solder objects are now selected. Now right-click anywhere in the modeler. Select Assign Thermal EM Loss. 
In this dialog, select the checkmark Use This Project. Under the Source Design, select the Aluminum IGBT Q3D Design. Select Simulate Source Design as needed. The EM Loss dialog box appears. We've mapped the EM volume loss from Q3D to IcePack. Press OK. Now we'll assign thermal boundary conditions. Press F to enter face selection mode. Select a cabinet face along the x-axis as shown here. Right-click and go to Assign Thermal Opening. In this dialog, click Velocity as the inlet type, and specify 5 meters per second for the x-velocity. In the same way, assign Opening 2 on the other face. This sets up an airflow across the device, similar to what a cooling fan could provide. Now let's define a solution set of an ice pack. Set the maximum number of iterations to 150. Set flow regime to turbulent. Keep the zero turbulence option selected. Select solve flow and energy equation sequentially. Leave the default settings under the convergence and solver settings tabs. At this point we can run the electrothermal simulation. So start the simulation now. In the next video we'll perform post-processing on the results.